you've also been involved with the tool former LLM. So uh, this is an LLM that came out earlier and the tool former is specialized to decide which API to call in a circumstance, when to call the API and what arguments to pass and how best to incorporate the results into the next token prediction of the generative model. Um, so maybe this is a good time to kind of switch over and talk about this tool former project um, since it sounds like future Llama iterations might incorporate some of that kind of capability. Yeah. Um, I mean, so for the story, the tool former was uh, co connecting large language models with tools was an idea I had uh, last summer, a year ago. Uh, it was like kind of felt to a natural extension of all those models, a retro atlas hag, where you augment with a retriever uh, a language model. And the intuition is very easy. Like, so the idea was to train together a dense retriever and a language model so that you will augment the context. And so when you ask a question, you will search on all the training uh, data some uh, relevant passages. And so if the model didn't remember memory as well, it will boost the capabilities, which was very efficient uh, as shown in all those papers. But so this is what we call a non-parametric uh, framework because you rely not only on the parameters, the weights of the model, but also on external source of knowledge that could possibly grow through time to, for instance, incorporate uh, new fresh information without necessarily retraining the model. But that being said, uh, my idea was to extend this to a non-parametric general framework where you could see, and there was some work at the time that was doing that, you could see how uh, using a calculator or a Python executor or different search engine, maybe I'm using Google for some search and Google Scholar for very specific search on papers. And so the idea was to just give a list, a set of tools to the model and much more like a human-like uh, way teach it to use them given the context, not at each inference time, but so the model now has to know when to use a tool, how to use it to benefit from this performance. And so Toolformer, uh, Timo Schwick led uh, this work uh, and we published it in February. And I think it was also like uh, very pleasant timing. It was two months after ChatGPT and everyone was kind of, well, the game is over, ChatGPT, AGI is there, uh, what's next? But ChatGPT at the time was just limited to a window, like you're chatting with an agent that has no access to the world. And that changed a lot, the perception that you can have once you can give the LLM the access to the world, to some knowledge, it, it makes the um, experience for the user completely different. It extends the capabilities dramatically. And so that's what we have done with Toolformer with uh, some self-supervised techniques. So the model uh, learns that basically itself when it increases, uh, when it reduces the perplexity uh, using the tool. Uh, so yeah, that was the main idea. Yeah, and so this problem, this may be familiar in an analogous way, and you, and you can tell me where maybe there are, where the analogy breaks down. But having not used Toolformer myself yet, it seems to me to be similar to what later happened with ChatGPT with the plugins, um, so that you know now with ChatGPT, you can turn on third-party plugins. So if you turn on the Wolfram Alpha plugin, then when you you know ask ChatGPT to do a calculus problem, it's going to bring in Wolfram Alpha to to use a, to use that API as opposed to trying to use next token prediction to do math, which works surprisingly well in a lot of circumstances. Given that <laughs> like it's like mind boggling that uh, this next token prediction can often do math correctly, but you know you're 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 basically guaranteed a correct answer, a correct differentiation, uh, for example, if you use Wolfram Alpha to do it. So uh, ChatGPT will automatically detect, okay, this is a circumstance where I should be using Wolfram Alpha. Let's do some math with that. Um, or yeah, it can access the web. Like you said, like you, you can do a web search or you know, it can plug into uh, websites like Kayak to book, to, make, to book you a trip and to find you the car rental and uh, book the hotel. Um, so is, is that kind of, is that the analogous, 
analogous use case to Toolformer, but Toolformer is obviously open source. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the idea was there. I, I saw a lot on Twitter when uh, one month late after Toolformer uh, open air is the plugins. So they actually cite in the plugin uh, pl page Toolformer. And uh, some people said, oh, tool, uh, OpenAI re implemented Toolformer in one month. Honestly and humbly, I think the idea was in the air and we had a good timing, uh, yeah, putting yeah, a flag yeah. there. Um, I think also the method used by uh, OpenAI was quite different from Toolformer. Yeah. So that's quite interesting. In, in Toolformer, the idea was we, so we had access to bad, I mean, at the time, language model compared to GPT-3, mm -hmm. at least. Uh, it was before Lama. And so what we did is with the self-supervised method, which works kind of well. But my conclusion also at the end of the work was we need more capable base model uh, and fine-tune a line model such that um, we learn to use tool with some instruction following scheme, which is also why I uh, stepped back from Toolformer at the time uh, and not extended the project to work on uh, Lama 2 and uh, making it working with instruction tuning to follow the instruction of the user. And actually, you have um, one uh, paragraph at the end in the discussion analysis the paper showing kind of emergence of tool use, where you just, with a prompt, describe, uh, you tell to the model, basically, natural language, you can use a calculator, use this format. Uh, for the API, use um, a search engine, use this format. Uh, now, what can, I don't remember which one it was in the paper, but like, what's the difference in height between Eiffel Tower and Empire State Building? And so then, naturally, say, step one, uh, search height of the Empire State Building, search uh, height of the Eiffel Tower, and then calculator the difference between the two. So you can see how like from tool former where there's the ISD of using the tools, but the method is pretty efficient, but yet I would say is obsolete with a better line model. We move to Lama 2 to now maybe come back to, to former. Mm 